of Government Indicted, my website, marstevens.net, where we're working to bring about a voluntary society one visitor at a time and also one radio show at a time. Where we, uh, The radio show is called The No State Project on uh, Saturdays from 4 to 7 Eastern Standard Time on LRN.FM. That's the Liberty Radio Network. And uh, we always invite dissent and criticism. However, we rarely get it because uh, usually the criticism is that I'm, I'm an idiot, I'm a wacko, and there really is no actual merit to any of the arguments that are being leveled against me. And so that's why there's this, uh, very rarely do we get any uh, dissent on the show. And uh, Mr. Evans is no different. This is Dan Evans, and um, he and his, and his band of uh, attorneys, uh, I guess uh, part of, you know, for some reason, there were, it, there's, it's almost borderline obsession that uh, they just can't stop writing about me. And so the only reason why I'm even addressing this is because I have made it to his guru and big, another big fish, the tax protester dossier. And uh, just remember, taxation is the forcible taking of property. I actually oppose uh, and think it's wrong to force people to give me money. And uh, for some reason, uh, Dan thinks it's okay to force people to give you money. That's his moral high, your moral, uh, you know, that, that's his morality. His morality is it is okay to force people to give you money. That's moral to this, to this man. So, um, uh, but what he did was, I want to, he, he wrote this thing up about me. Uh, again, it seems like uh, these people are uh, obsessed that they just can't stop writing about me. Again, if they thought that I really was a criminal and they had evidence to prove that I was a criminal, why wouldn't they take a chance to uh, ambush me on a live radio broadcast after all these years? And so uh, the man just, uh, he, he's, he, this is August 31st he updated this. I mean, this is just a few days ago. I mean, the man can't stop writing about me. So uh, whatever his fascination is, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't get it. Uh, but uh, I want to address this not 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 for 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 Dan's sake because I don't think I can convince this guy of anything. He he hates me to such a degree that you know he he, he, well, he won't even he won't even speak to me, uh, let alone confront me and and actually address the actual issues that I raise. Uh, but this is for the people who go to his website and and read trash like this and may think that there's some actual merit to it. So if you notice here, he 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 can't even just say I'm an anarchist. No, which anarchist is just we reject the concept of having a ruler. Apparently, uh, Big Dan here believes in having rulers and, and, and hierarchies and stuff like that. That's, a, that's a, some moral compass you got there, Dan. Uh, so anyway, uh, he has to say I'm a run-of-the-mill anarchist. But uh, I distinguish myself with the bizarre notion that the government does not have standing to enforce its own laws in court and that the court, therefore, does not have jurisdiction. He also believes that jurisdiction must be proved. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. Uh, even when the court has jurisdiction as a matter of law and has raised questions about the difference between the United States and the United States of America. Well, let's address this right here. Um, even though I do help write paperwork, I, uh, it, people, can st people are still free to put whatever arguments they want. So I do not make this particular argument, never have. I've never raised the issue. If it's in paperwork that I help write, it, it wasn't written by me. So uh, let's dispel that, you know, right away. So that, that's got no merit right there. Uh, but what he does here, and, of course, he, he has to throw in the bizarre. Uh, he has to, you know, uh, prejudice the reader immediately. He can't just lay out what I'm saying and let the reader make up his own mind. He has to throw in bizarre. So uh, he's already po trying to poison the well there. Uh, but then he goes one step further in his dishonesty because he doesn't even get the damn position right. My position has always been that there's no evidence proven their constitutional laws apply to us and that they have no evidence to show that a legal right was violated and no evidence of any kind of damage. It's always been about evidence. And we'll see that uh, Mr. Mr. Evans, th this, this bloke, uh, he thinks that that's bizarre. So let's go to the actual standing cross-reference, which has been up for years. And we talk, and, and so uh, I have the, a logical logical progression here. I don't think there's any real, any gap in, in, the, in the steps or in the logic here. Um, we know that, uh, and we have court cases that, that state exactly what standing is. It's a violation of legal right and damage. So if you go down in the standing cross-reference, uh, you can find many, many uh, examples of that. 
uh, that the, the, the existence of a legal duty uh, and a breach of that duty and damage. So uh, it's very simple to show that it's the injury and, uh, and, and the damage. And the logic we go through, I think it's pretty sound. The government was established and instituted for one purpose, and I have that cited up here. And the, it's a Declaration of Independence and Article 2, Section 2 of the Arizona Constitution. So I'm not pulling that out of thin air. Uh, obviously, the courts are a part of the government, so they're going to have the same purpose to protect and, and maintain individual rights. Uh, the court's jurisdiction then has one purpose, to secure and protect individual rights, which we have in many, many court cases that say that. And then standing to invoke or invoking in the court's jurisdiction requires requires the allegation a right has been or is being violated and damage. Now, Mr. Evans here, the illustrious August uh, Mr. Evans, the, uh, the advanced university degree holder, the Juris Doctorate, uh, is trying to, wants to convince us that, uh, and his readers, that uh, they just have to, that it's bizarre for me to think that evidence is required, and that uh, you can have standing and jurisdiction as a matter of law, not a matter of evidence. Now, we're going to see. Uh, now, I know everything from, from people called government is, is pure trash. It's absolutely uh, uh, garbage. It's, it's provable garbage. It's, it's false. It, uh, but even the Supreme Court is going to disagree with, with Mr. Evans. Uh, so if Mr. Evans thinks it's bizarre, let him take it to the Supreme Court. So what we have here is Ashcroft versus Iqbal. And so I know the citation, I'll give it here, and it'll also be in the video. Uh, that would be uh, 556 U.S., page 662 from 2009. So let's get into the actual text and what the uh, Supreme Court uh, sees as necessary for a complaint, let's say like a petition to enforce an IRS summons, which is governed by the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. So it says a complaint must contain a short, and a short and plain statement of the claim showing that the pleader is entitled to relief. Detailed fal fal factual allegations are not required. But this is where it gets interesting. Okay, The rule does call for, get this, sufficient factual matter. Can you read that? Sufficient factual matter accepted as true to state a claim to relief that is plausible on its face. A claim has plausible uh, facial plausibility when the pleaded factual content allows the court to draw the reasonable inference that the defendant is liable for the misconduct alleged. The two working principles underlie Twombly. First, the tenant that a court must accept a complaint's allegations as true is inapplicable to a threadbare to threadbare recitals of a cause of actions elements supported by mere conclusory statements which is saying we have jurisdiction as a matter of law we have standing as a matter of law no it is inapplicable to threadbare recitals of a cause of actions elements supported by mere conclusory statements wow really a court concerning a motion to dismiss may begin by identifying allegations that, because they are mere conclusions, are not entitled to an assumption of truth. While legal conclusions can provide, we'll go, we'll follow, while legal conclusions can provide the complaint's framework, they must be supported by factual allegations. Do you get that? While legal conclusions can provide the complaint's framework, they must be supported by factual allegations. So what in the world? Why would Mr. Evans, this guy, why would he come out and say that it's a bizarre notion that they have to have evidence alleged to prove standing? Well, Mr. Evans doesn't address that issue. This is his logical, this is his fallacy, this is his straw man. I didn't say the government does not have standing to enforce its own laws in court. What I said was they didn't have any evidence. And the evidence is required when they file a pleading. The evidence is required. While legal conclusions can't provide the complaint's framework, they must be supported by factual allegations. So, this leads to another one of Mr. Evans's logical fallacies. This is extremely common with these people. It is a matter of standard operating procedure with them. When you're in and out of court, they will incessantly conflate issues of fact with issues of law and opinion. 
this guy here, this Mr. Evans, will never address the factual issue other than to say it doesn't have to be proven. This man believes that you can just say the laws apply, be willing to kill, and that magically makes them appear, uh, uh, apply. He actually believes and has written on his website that the, whether the Constitution and laws apply is not a matter of evidence. Really. So you could just bring an opinion, make an argument, have a conclusory statement, and have no factual support? Well, the Supreme Court seems to disagree with that, at least in theory. The tenet that a court must accept the complaint's allegations as true is inapplicable to threadbare recitals of a cause of action's elements supported by mere conclusory statements. So just saying the laws apply is just a mere conclusory statement. It has to be supported by what? Must be, they must be supported by factual allegations. So uh, remember that. Remember these fallacies when you're dealing with, when, when people, you know, when you read this. And I know that when people read this, they will click, uh, uh, click on and, and go to my website. So hopefully they'll get to this video and be able to see, the, and see through these stupid uh, arguments that I didn't even make and these logical fallacies that Dan relies on. He will, uh, so the idea that you can make an argument that the Constitution and laws apply or that you have a legal right to my books and records or to investigate me. That's a conclusory statement. That's an opinion. That's a damn argument, Dan. And the idea that you don't have to have any evidence to support that it, it is only a testament to your lack of a moral compass. And this is the reason why this man and his associates will not confront me in real time on this radio show, The No State Project, or any other radio show, or any other public forum. They won't do it. I want to point out one quick logical fallacy, because he does pull out some uh, court cases that did not, uh, where the judges did not agree with me. But we can see that the Supreme Court, I mean, the, the, the issue stands on its own. It has merit whether the lower courts agree, or even if one particular member of the Supreme Court disagrees. It has merit on its own. So instead of going to the actual success stories, he cherry picks and wants you to believe that just because some judges have rejected it, that that means the claim has no merit. And uh, that's just cherry picking. He could obviously go and we can go to the success stories and you can see that there's documentary proof and it's not just in traffic court, as we can see here with the Michael Scott Law Firm. Uh, and it's not just in the U.S., and uh, we got them in Canada and Australia and England, for heaven's sakes. So um, what I'm doing is op another open invitation to Dan and his ilk. I will go against an entire panel of your choosing. It could be your buddy Wes, Jay Atkinson. I'm more than happy to meet you guys in a real-time, live, public confrontation. Take this as an opportunity to do what you to, to, to put up or shut up. Just come on the air present your evidence, confront me, and prove that I am actually a con man. Um, I've already invited Dan to do that, and of course he's, he has refused and all sorts, you know, silly reasons uh, that I'm not going to get into. But I put the invitation out there again. And if anyone thinks that Dan is correct, if you think that I'm dead wrong, then you're more than welcome to call the show. We're live every Saturday from 4 to 7 Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Radio Network, and I'd be more than happy to schedule you as a guest. And we could take an entire three hours, whatever time is necessary, for you to flesh out and present your evidence to show that I am a con man and that what I've pres been presenting is wrong. And my name is Mark Stevens. The website is markstevens.net.